man so check this out folks here we are west fork of the duchene river once again we're gonna go up here and uh take a little journey so yeah here we are on my way back home from work and the day has worn on quite a bit because I had a little bit of an appointment in Duchesne County with the traffic court judge. Didn't go as well as I had hoped. Uh, I was hoping I, I got a ticket for like five over. And so instead of just paying the $120, I thought I'd go to court and <laughs> see if I could talk my way out of a, out of a uh, maybe a little bit lesser of a fine. This judge was not having it. So I kind of wasted six months of uh, putting that up on my calendar and an entire half of my morning to go. And the dude in front of me, the first dude that he uh, sentenced that day, got a fishing ticket for one fish over the limit. And the fine for one fish over the limit is $450. So that's good to know. Uh, but the dude was like, ah, I'm just gonna, the judge was like, I'm gonna, how about we make it a $50 fine? And the guy was like, yeah, that'd be great. So I was thinking, all right, sweet. It's gonna pay off that I went in there. Nope. He wasn't having it. He's like, how do you want to pay it? And I said, well, I was thinking maybe I could do some community service. Maybe like, instead of paying it. <laughs> He's like, well, people generally don't like to do that. Uh, and if you want to pay it, if you want to do the community service, it's going to be 12 hours. I was like, oh my god, I'm not doing 12 hours. Where do I got to pay? Where do I got to make my payment to? So, anyway, over the phone, credit card payment, $120 later. So that's why my day has worn on here. But it wasn't super, it wasn't very nice out earlier, but cool, mid-50s, and overcast and windy too. But I've kind of journeyed up uh, that other canyon over there. And now I'm going to cruise up a few miles up here, up the West Fork of the Duchesne River to some prime fishing grounds. So that's what I'm gonna do today, take advantage of my trip home. And what I wanted to do was put together my uh, 1,000 subscriber video. So that's what this video is all about. So along the way, instead of just sitting at a park bench or something, I thought I'd just ramble on about my uh, um, giving thanks for my 1,000 subscribers. Uh, as we make a little journey out of this. So here. what I'm gonna talk about is uh, the journey to get here to a thousand subscribers, why I'm a YouTuber, uh, what I wish I knew when I started this channel, and kind of what I hope for for the future, what the goals are for the future. Um, I wanted to give a big thanks to two folks who subscribed as my thousandth subscriber uh, Narcisse Fields. She was very kind and left a nice comment. You can check out her, uh, check out her channel. And, uh, it was a comment left on my, uh, unboxing, whatever, of the new GoPro Hero 9. And then a new dude named Drone Pilot from Australia, I believe. So, big thanks to you two guys. That's awesome. Hope you stick around and participate and like some of these videos. So, big thanks to those guys. And thanks to the rest of you, too. The other thousand subscribers. Right now, as of today, I'm up to about a uh, thousand and fifty. Whew. It's kind of funny. It's like once you reach a thousand, momentum starts to pick up a little bit. It appears as though. Just wanted to mention that when you're a small channel like mine, you know the small numbers make a big deal. You know, every one of you guys that. Uh, click subscribe. I know only maybe 5 or 10% of my subscribers actually stick around and watch my videos. That's fine. That's cool. But, you know, it means a lot that somebody would be willing to subscribe with the intent of maybe coming back to watch a video at another time or something. So, uh, it means a lot. Thanks to each and every one of you. Well, I'm certain my channel will never reach, like, the numbers, lofty numbers of 10,000. I don't do anything that interesting, but, uh, yeah, when you're a small channel, every one of you guys that subscribes means a lot. So thanks a lot. All right, so to talk about the journey, uh, dang. I did have one other YouTube channel before this, and it wasn't very organized, and it just was a bunch of random shit. Because, 
you know, YouTube's been around for a long time, probably like 18 years now or something. It's been around a long time, so it serves the purpose of uh, just having a place to upload videos that you can share. So my first channel wasn't really with the intent of being a YouTuber whatsoever, and I had, I don't know, 100 videos on there or something. It's all sorts of disorganized mess. Uh, I've tried to pull a few of those videos off, some of the better ones, and put them into the archive playlist on this channel. And I've still got a lot to do, actually. Because some of those videos are pretty awesome, actually. But, uh... If you think this channel is disorganized with, uh, all sorts of randomness... <laughs> you should see the old channel. No organization whatsoever. I don't think I can do this without my sunglasses on, you guys, so I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah. <sighs> Basically, what I, why I started this channel, or how this channel came to be, was kind of a follow-on of... I'm hoping the audio will put, pan out in here. I got all sorts of audio recordings going on, but... It's, we're gonna be down a rough-ass road for quite a while, so... Really, what happened, long story... This is gonna be a long video, long story, is, uh... I got laid off from my job in Alaska as a helicopter pilot, and so... I was looking for work, and I had these drones and these uh, these drones I was flying. So I thought, man, why don't I try to make some money using drone photography? Everybody's doing it, right? Actually, there wasn't a whole lot of people doing it, but it was becoming more popular. So I need to make another video on how to uh, unsuccessfully fail at running a drone business, <laughs> a drone photography business, because <coughs> it's one of my one of my business attempts I've made over the years that didn't pan out so well. So, I had all these, I had all these drones, uh, and I was, I made a little bit of money on the side, set up a business license and all that, but I ended up getting a good job again and going back to work as a helicopter pilot, as my normal career path. So, I had all these drones, I had all these GoPros, and all this camera equipment, and I've just typically been documenting journeys along the way for years, pretty much long before, you know, all along. Even back in the days of the Army in my combat deployment days, I made a lot of, uh, just was kind of a documentarian historian of, of the journeys and whatnot. So, um, I had all this equipment and I was like, you know what, what the hell am I going to do with all this equipment? And I said, well, how about I start uploading some videos to YouTube? People are making money at it. If I try to make a, a channel that documents my, my journeys and actually have some sort of a more of a regular format with the intent of trying to be a YouTuber, let's just try it out and see how it works. And so my first journey, my very first video was uh, the Mendenhall Glacier under the ice cave video in Juneau, Alaska. It's gotten quite a bit of views. Uh, so it's going back three and a half years ago now. It's taken me three and a half years to reach a thousand subscribers. <laughs> that is ridiculous. So, uh... And then my next series, my first series of videos was actually, uh... My journey up to Alaska. My overlanding trip in the, uh, 100 series leg cruiser. Up to Alaska. And so, that's kind of what kicked off everything and... It was pretty fun. I've got a lot of really cool videos out there and stuff. I encourage you to go back and check them out. My hope is that if my channel actually reaches some some growth, that people will actually go back and see the videos from before, and uh, you know those will actually get a little bit more views. Because as I will get to later, one of the things I wish I had learned about has a lot to do with how I made those early videos. Okay, um, so yeah, just decided to do YouTube because it was basically a way to maybe, maybe potentially get organized, have an archive, have videos that I can go back and reflect on my journeys, uh, have a place to share videos onto my, you know, social media, my Facebook, my families, and uh, maybe make a little bit of money and maybe pay off some of the, some of the camera equipment or upgrade some of the camera equipment and help pay for, like, some of the subscription services and stuff that I have to uh, subscribe to, like Adobe, the Adobe Creative Commons subscription. 
some $400 a year just so that I can have a decent suite online or a computer editing software. So to help offset some of the costs of my hobby, basically, is why I do the YouTube. Uh, there's other reasons as well. <clears throat> you know, I tell stories a lot. You'll find with me that whether it's my videos, my stories, or around a campfire, that my video, my stories are pretty long-winded. I have to get every freaking detail in there, so. Bit of a storyteller. Not to say I'm the greatest storyteller or that any of my stories are very great, but, uh, you know, I get to go places and do things a lot, oftentimes alone, and uh, just want to tell a story while I'm going and of, of my journeys there. And having a place to go back and look at your videos is pretty cool. And anyway, I could ramble on. Now, uh, as of right now, I've got about 178, maybe 180 videos posted. So uh, a lot of those are long, long videos really that required a lot of editing and some of them aren't you know some of them are just a couple minutes long and so if you watch videos talking about how to get to how to reach a thousand subscribers or how to grow your channel you know the, the ongoing theme is basically keep uploading keep uploading keep uploading and some of the most successful YouTubers, like, you know, the king of YouTube, PewDiePie, and then, uh, what's the dude's name, Mr. Mr. something or other, Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast, man, he's hilarious, but, you know, he went on and talked to Casey Neistat at the studio apartment there in New York City, and he's asking him, you know, what did, what did you do, how did, what is your... Uh, suggestions for people, recommendations for people to grow their channel. And he, he talked about his earliest videos were just terrible. And he still has them up on his YouTube channel, which is pretty funny. And so the point is that at 170 videos, 180 videos, you know, <clears throat> that's not a small number of videos, but some people might not, you know, achieve a thousand subscribers until they've uploaded 300, 400, 500 videos. I don't know. Other videos, you know, if you get something that goes viral or you're really good at what you do and how you share it on your social media and how it gets reshared and stuff, you know, you might make 10 videos and reach 10,000 subscribers. So it all just depends on what you're doing and what, how you do. But that's where we're at right now, just, just about 180 videos on YouTube. All right, so I kind of skipped ahead into the why for, why, we, why I do this. So about nine different points here on why I, why I do it. I just love sharing videos and telling stories and seeing, seeing things that are awesome. I've got my little notes here on the notepad. I try to stay organized through this, but uh, I already talked about that. Uh, each video that I make is kind of a little project. You know, now that I'm later on, I'm 40 years old, I'll be 41 here pretty quick. I don't have a whole lot of... Uh, stuff I have to work on on the side like my education and stuff so each one of these is kind of a little project you know which has a has a process to it and each one's a little project and you know you have a tangible item at the end that uh, you, you finish off and then you post it and then you move on to the next thing and then you can go back and reflect on those videos when you go back and watch them so it's kind of neat to have a little bit of a, a goal-oriented project ongoing okay uh, my Facebook and my Instagram generally are for uh, my Facebook is primarily for personal stuff you know family stuff my Instagram's a lot less personal I don't get very personal on, on my Instagram and so YouTube kind of provides a bit of a platform to express things across the planet with people from all over the world that are that I don't personally know really and uh, you know, it just gives you, a, gives you a place to do that. And Facebook and Instagram, there just doesn't, there's just not enough space or attention span from the people that follow me for me to get out my whole story. So people on Instagram and stuff, they don't want to, they, they want to see a photo, an instantaneous photo of some, some cool place you're at or something you saw and did, and then they want to move on and get their, you know, Get the rest of their fix so youtube provides a place that you can actually 
tell a longer story. And that's what I need. <laughs> yeah, it's really been pretty rewarding interacting with people from around the planet. I mean, like, YouTube is a community. Who, who would have thought that YouTube, I, I'm surprised that YouTube hasn't been trumped by something else, you know? I mean, of course there's Vimeo and different things, but I'm surprised that YouTube itself re remains and reigns king of this platform and how widely used it is for everything, right? Everything, from news to anything. YouTube is a place, so it's kind of neat that it's stayed the way it has and it gives anybody who wants to just upload a video a, a platform to do that whether you want to be a youtuber or not so it's kind of neat and uh yeah it's just it's a neat place to be able to interact as a community with people from all around the world same thing with the other social medias is uh you find people with like interests and uh and it gives you a place to interact with these folks in the comment section and stuff so that's pretty neat I really enjoy that. I've made some friends with people strictly through Facebook that, or uh, through uh, YouTube that I never would have before. Some people are in my region, some people are just a few miles from where I live that I met through YouTube. So it works really good for that. It's pretty awesome. Additionally, I, I use YouTube a lot. I watch a ton of YouTube. I mean, like, shit, I probably watch two hours a day or more of YouTube. That's about, I mean, I might watch an in, a Netflix video here and there, but it just depends on the week. But uh, YouTube is a pretty regular thing, you know. So I get a lot of use out of it. Anything from entertainment channels, uh, you know, every sort of channel for uh, information, entertainment, amusement, you know, this and that and the other. So YouTube's a, a super handy resource for all of that. Bothering you? No problem. Oh, we'll turn it around. How are you? I'm here. Familiar with this area? I've been on it before. It was nighttime, but where are you trying to go? Well, well is this what? private? No. Oh, it isn't. The road. There's private on the side. Oh, okay, we saw these private yeah. gates going through. No trespassing. No yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a forest road. Okay, so we're okay to go on this. Then. Totally. Yeah. Now, yeah, I think this one just goes to his cabin there or whatever the. Well, that we're okay is. on this. That's what we're working. Yeah, yeah, on. yeah. This is a good road. Do you got the map? Well, okay. we're just make sure this we're not on private property. Yeah, because this will take you. It gets a little hairy if you go to the end, but uh, it looks like. Okay, we're just concerned we were on private property. Yeah, you can go all the way up here, and then it puts you up onto a main road that takes you through a main okay. gravel road. So you're good. Okay, perfect. Hey, thanks. All right, see you guys. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, so I get a lot of use out of YouTube. It's a resource for me. It's quite enjoyable. I like it a lot. So it's kind of neat to be able to contribute to that as well. Uh, filming itself is is a challenge, you know? Like I said before, each one of these is a little bit of a project, but uh, you know, it's a challenge. So it's interesting. Uh, I just feel like if I'm not filming something, I'm gonna miss out on it and I will forget about it. And maybe that's not the best way to go about life. Maybe you're kind of are too focused on uh, filming. I've talked about this before, but you know it's a balance. You gotta you gotta put the camera down and experience the experience while you're there. But it's also just kind of a cool process to document it as well. You know, it's pretty fun. And like I said before, you know I've just got a lot of camera equipment, and so this camera equipment needs to be used. Otherwise, it's gonna I should give it away, or it's gonna sit in a it's gonna sit in a. Uh, drawer somewhere, collect dust or something, so may as well put the stuff to use. I've always been fascinated with cameras, camera equipment, you know, my father, my stepdad, he was a, he was a bit of a photographer, he had a dark room, and a little bit of older camera equipment, so yeah, photography, <laughs> videography is just, it's cool, you know, it's an interest I've always had. And as far as monetarily, well, I already talked about that, what my goals are monetarily. Uh, Essentially, if I could make mm, four or five hundred dollars a year enough to pay for my uh, <laughs> subscription services and stuff, then it would it would feel like I was at least getting some back on what I put into it monetarily. So 
other than that, I don't really have any uh, intentions of trying to make money at it, so. All right, now, things I wish I knew before I started my YouTube channel or when I was getting started with it. Now this right here is the stretch that I've been wanting to fish. And uh, you kind of got to hike down there to get to it, but that's where the goods are down there, I swear. I really think so. I really think that's where the big ones are. There's a bunch of beaver ponds and stuff down there. It's about half mile, three quarters of a mile down from the parking area. But I think that's where we need to go. So that's what we're going to do be a journey so we're probably gonna have to pick this video up later we're probably trying to wrap it up here now what I wish I knew starting this YouTube channel well three and a half four years ago uh, I would have never guessed that it would have taken this long to make money on YouTube three three and a half years ago they hadn't instated the policy that made it mandatory to have a thousand subscribers before you could make money Check the winds down there. How windy is it? It's kind of breezy down there, man. We're gonna try it anyway. And so that was a bit of a surprise and an unwelcome surprise. So even then, even knowing that I needed to have a thousand subscribers, I did. I <laughs> I figured with the amount of effort and time I was putting into my videos that they would take off. Because, dude, I was putting hours and hours and hours and hours of time and effort into each freaking video. And I was making numerous videos and making series of videos. So I figured that, you know, it would be somewhat commensurate with the amount of time I put into it. That's not the case. Uh, so I wish I would have known how long it would have taken or that it would have taken me three years before I would even begin to make any money at YouTube. Because then I'm not sure I would have done it. I would have certainly approached it a whole lot differently. That's, there's no doubt about that. So, uh, <laughs> that much I wish I would have known. The biggest thing I probably would have done differently is I wouldn't have spent anywhere near as much time into each video thinking, you know, oh, I'll just kick out a real quality product because it was never gonna get visibility. It was never gonna be seen. I wish I, would, wish I would have known that. Uh, and what I would have focused on instead was kicking out a lot of regular, regular content that was more personalized maybe towards building an audience, uh, more talking head vlog type stuff, a lot shorter videos. So then I wouldn't have felt so burnt out and I wouldn't have felt like I wasn't getting, as, you know, really getting much of a payoff for all of my efforts. So that, that's the first and foremost thing I wish I would have known. I still would have done it, I just would have approached it a whole lot differently, right? We are here, folks, at the fishing grounds. Oh my god, it looks freaking phenomenal. It's actually not as far of a hike as I thought. So, yeah, we're a quarter mile, quarter to a half mile down to the prime fishing grounds, and uh, the whole stretch in between here and there is going to be very promising. Okay, uh, yeah, so I wish, I, I didn't expect it to take this long. Uh, the algorithm itself is constantly being revamped in a way that I feel keeps small startup channels like mine in the dark because YouTube is a business on their end. It's completely business driven, money driven. I mean, like, they are there to make money. And if your channel doesn't produce enough traction and uh, throughput, what's the word I'm looking for? Click-through rates. Uh, you're not doing them any favors and they're not gonna do you any favors. So I think that's kind of dumb. I think that the way their algorithm works now is, uh, is not beneficial to small startups, but that's just something you're gonna have to, that's just something you're gonna have to deal with. So you gotta have a strategy of how you're gonna deal with that. And I, it took me three years to learn a strategy of what I would have done differently. So I subscribed to quite a few different channels like Brian G. Johnson's TV channel is freaking awesome. And uh, 
his is maybe this is maybe my favorite channel for uh I don't know, there's a few different ones out there, but uh Yeah, you definitely gotta come up with a strategy of how to deal with the algorithm because the way I tried to do it do it sucked. Did not work. Quantity of uploads instead of spending days and days editing. My masterpieces learning as I went. I should have focused on regular short quality uploads at first instead of these epic sagas that only a handful of people ever got to see or appreciate and save those for later once I had an audience, as I said a minute ago. <sighs> uh, yeah, last thing here. I never wanted to be a, I never wanted to make a bunch of money or be a big time YouTuber. I don't have that type of personality. I don't have a background in film production. I've got a bunch of camera equipment, and I tell stories. And, uh, man, it's breezy down there. This is not gonna be good. So, you know, I'm not a big time personality guy. I'm just an average bloke. So, there are millions of channels on YouTube. If other people out there can have shittier channels than me, then, you know, I can do it too, so. Take what you get when you come to this channel. And yeah, uh, hopefully I'll have enough, reached enough success to kind of monetarily support the channel and maybe give back some prizes and giveaways and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, hopefully I'm on track to provide some entertainment to folks and reach a level of accomplishment and relative success going forward. Yeah, that's pretty much what I've been rambling on about. So, huh. Let's see. Let's see if I can just wrap this up before I go fishing here. What I hope for in the channel. Uh, what I hope for is more engagement with an audience that sees the randomness of the adventures I upload and who want to stick around and see what's next because if you've been around a while, you know that uh, that's what my channel is. It's a variety show. And so if you can hang with that, you might see some cool stuff. If it's a video you don't like, move on to the next channel. Move, you know, move on to the next video. But uh, I'm not going to adapt everything in my life to make everyone happy. And I'm just going to keep filming and doing what I do. So that's probably the best formula for success is just be yourself, right? I mean, even if I had to shut down my YouTube channel tomorrow or never upload another thing and just let it, let it be what it is from here on. So what? I mean, my YouTube channel doesn't define me. Pretty busy guy with a lot of other things going on, so... Uh, take what you get. This is how it goes. Um, looking forward to meeting, meeting up with more people in person. Um, like Rodney, man, it was so awesome to go do that trip with him. He's from Vegas and uh, other folks like him. Uh, there's a couple other guys in Utah that are super fun characters that uh, I hope to meet other people like them. And uh, I think I will. I'm sticking around doing this stuff. Uh, intending to streamline. Streamline the productions and refine the quality, of course. It's like, but I only have so much time. It's kind of hard. I only have so much time to refine my my video editing skills and, you know, transitions and uh, after effects and different things like that in Adobe. It's like, I'm so far behind and backlogged on actually kicking out videos that are of adventures that are awesome adventures that I've been meaning to get to. That I have very little time to actually kind of refine my uh, editing skills, but that'll come in time. So I hope to uh, improve on those. Uh, working on getting my uh, YouTube vo vlogging room set up, studio set up at the house. Now that my son and my oldest son and my daughter have moved out, I got some spare space in my house. So try to get that set up. Get some microphones, some lighting, and some background stuff and the desk going on in there that'll be pretty nice that should improve some quality uh my goals for subscribers i'd say if i could reach the you know two or three thousand maybe up to ten thousand I, I can't i would have to improve a lot or change and do things differently a lot before ten thousand subs people would want to see what i have to say i get that but you know i've got a lot of different ideas and you know, we'll see what three and a half more years from now brings. So there's a lot of people out there watching YouTube that want some amusement and entertainment. So who knows, maybe 10,000 will actually happen one day. 
uh, it would feel like a pretty great accomplishment. Uh, so this is something that I wish that YouTube itself would do is what I feel like is that my YouTube channel isn't really a channel. It's more like a, it should be my YouTube network <laughs> with different channels that are, that right now are organized into playlists. So you could subscribe to my overall network, but maybe the channel you want to watch only pertains to my, uh, ADV motorcycle adventures, or it only pertains to my fishing adventures, or my off-road adventures, or my camping and hiking adventures, or potentially maybe my helicopter flying adventures, right? Uh, skateboarding adventures, snowboarding adventures. So I doubt that YouTube's ever going to do that, but it would be nice. So anyway, trying to somehow organize my uh, content into specific categories is an ongoing challenge, but we'll have to see. You know, I'm always considering just now that I've got this channel up and running well enough, I could focus this back on my daily vlog routine and then start some other channels, right? We'll see how that goes. One big thing that I hope for in the channel uh, that I've been meaning to do for quite some time <clears throat> is doing interviews. Not really a podcast type of thing, but interviews maybe in my home studio or out here in the wilderness or on different places like on the Baja race, because I know a lot of super interesting and very successful people that I have access to that I'm fortunate enough to call friends and colleagues that, uh, you know, I watch a lot of uh, podcasts and stuff and those interviews are just super intriguing. You get a chance to get to know these people a little bit more. And so I've got a long list of friends and those of you guys that are out there that are super interesting people, you know who you are. Uh, the invitation's coming to you, so hopefully you won't. Uh, hopefully you will entertain that. And uh, looking forward to sitting down and having some uh, chit chats with you guys and, and uh, getting to hear a little bit more of your stories of how you achieved what you did and what you hope for. So looking forward to that. It's probably an it's probably a subject for an entire other freaking channel, right? But we'll see. Uh, yeah, and uh, lastly, really just making more friends and growing more, growing, always growing personally, you know. It's kind of weird. Three and a half years ago wasn't that long ago, but you look back on those videos and those journeys I did, like the road trip up to Alaska and stuff, and, you know, I look like a much younger man, so. We'll see what three more years and ten more years beyond brings. So, growing personally and... Uh, We'll see what happens. So that's it. Thanks for helping me reach 10,000, uh, 10, 1,000 subscribers. I uh, hope you guys stick around and, you know, leave some comments. Those likes and those uh, comments really, really do a lot for the channel and gives me a sense of accomplishment and uh, gives me a sense of fulfillment with that it's actually working and that it's worthwhile, you know, chit chatting with you guys. So it means a lot. I uh, hope you stick around and we'll see you on the next videos. Maybe the next update, channel update will be when we reach 2,000. Maybe we'll have a giveaway or, or something like that. But what I've noticed is with my more recent uh, frequency of uploads, like a couple a week, and the more engagement I've been having, the numbers are growing exponentially. So, like, it seems reasonable that uh, these numbers will start to grow. Uh, exponentially so we'll see but thanks for sticking around and listening to me ramble on another rambling session and uh, we'll see you on the next one That water is freezing.